So I just talked to my daughter. If you didn't know, her name is uh, Captain Kelsey Garrett. So she's my daughter, and very proud of her, and Cam as well. And I said, you know, how can I make this interesting? And she said, well, don't suck. Um, <laughs> and try to make it interactive. So the time that I was at West Point, I hated standing up on a podium and just presenting. It's boring, right? You guys, yeah, agree? So what I want to do is I like walking around. So forgive me if it annoys you, but it at least will keep you awake, perhaps. Uh, so that's the way I'm going to go about today, and who knows, I may even call on you, um, just like I did at West Point, especially if you're sleeping and you're not even uh, not. Definitely not here to embarrass you. Colonel Tate, Mr. Vickery, Ms. Malone, Ms. Sherman, I want to thank you for inviting me here today. And when I was uh, first invited to come to Howe Military Academy, I've come up here a couple other times just to visit, never really saw what you have to offer here at Howe Military Academy. And last month at uh, your ice cream social, I actually had a few conversations with some of the cadets, which I really enjoyed. But coming back to here and taking part in like that social uh, really brought back some fond memories of me for me when I was at West Point. And those memories revolve a lot around the faculty and staff, interacting with them, and how we try to help mold our, our young men and women and future leaders, both in the service if they decide to go that route, and beyond that. So it, it really brought some back some great memories. I, I loved my two duty uh, stations at, at West Point as an instructor there. So when I first came here, though, uh, I, I, when I was offered uh, to, to speak here, I asked, well, what's the topic? And it was on service. And I was like, yes, that is something that I can get behind. I'm very excited about service. and. A lot of people talk about service when they were in the military. And really what you're going to hear me focus a lot on today is what I've done since the military. And it's not just at looking towards the cadets, but everybody in this room, everybody in this chapel, about how we can continue to serve others. So that's really what, what I want to get at today, is talking about service. It's not just the military flavor to this. So there's three questions that I want everyone in here to really ask of themselves during this conversation. Is one, what is your purpose? Have you found a purpose in life? And I know when I was growing up, when I was in high school, if somebody asked me that question, I'd be like, well, I don't know. But this is the time to start asking that question of you. And even as you get older, a lot of times people continue to seek purpose in life. So start thinking about this today. And the next question is, what are you passionate about? I think many of the faculty and staff here are quite passionate about developing uh, people into great leaders, great mentors, great community servants. So a lot of people in this room have definitely found a passion. So I'm hoping that as cadets here, you too are starting to seek out, what are you passionate about? And it's not social media, it's not online gaming, it's not all these things that give you maybe some instant gratification. It's something that's more long-term, something that you can live up to, not just now, but when you're 20, 30, 40, 60, 80 years old, and you look back and say, I've li lived a good life because I found purpose in life and I found passion in life. The third question is, if you found that passion and that purpose, are they aligned well with you? And if you can do that, I argue that you're going to find happiness in this world. If you don't have purpose and you're not finding passion, you're going to have you know, some issues. You're going to have some struggles. So I'm going to talk about that. And so throughout this conversation, think about this. What is your purpose? Uh, what you see up on the slide there, I only have a few slides. Most of them have pictures. Uh, on the left-hand side is my picture from back in 1983 when I went to basic training. I loved basic training. And most of the people in the NCOs were probably like, what the heck is he talking about? How can you possibly love basic training? I love basic training. As it turned out, I ended up loving my 30 years in the military. And I can only think about three months' time where I did not love my time in the military. So I went to basic training, and, uh, and then in the middle there is a picture of my daughter at her graduation back in 2012 and her commissioning as a second lieutenant. 
And then on the right hand side is a picture of a community service project that we did down in Columbus, Ohio. And we continue to do this. I'm going to focus mostly on what's on the right. I'm not going to talk much about my military service. So this brings me to my why story. The first slide here is going to summarize 30 years of service in one single slide. Those 30 years of service really started off my motivation for going into the military. It wasn't some big noble cause. I didn't have a whole bunch of family that were you know, in the military. But instead, I needed money for college. I wanted to, to get out of my little town in Freeport, Illinois. And uh, I wanted to continue my education, but I could not afford it. So I said, darn it, they're hiring a few good men and women. Let me give that a try. Went to base training, loved it. Went into the reserve for four years, commissioned as a second lieutenant when I was 19, and then uh, also got married when I was 19. Still married today, 33 years. So big things happening in, high, in college. And then I graduated in 1987, went on active duty. While I was on active duty, I served in Gulf War. Desert Storm, Desert Shield. <sighs> very rewarding. Very, very rewarding time there. But then 9 11 occurs. And think about this. From 9 11, 2001, through my uh, retirement in December 2012, not once did I deploy. Right? I'm going to come back to this because it's very important about where, where I am at today and where I'm going in the future. So, I call this my black hole. And it, it was ingrained in me. We're going to come back to this in, in a little bit. Um, so I didn't serve in Iraq or Afghanistan. I served through leading, teaching. When I was at West Point and interacting with the cadets there, day in and day out, and providing them advice, mentorship. If you haven't found somebody at Howe Military Academy or elsewhere that you can look to it for mentorship and advisement, you need to do that. Find somebody that you trust, talk to them, open up with them. Get them involved, ask them, how can I get to where you're at today? How can I find a purpose? How can I find a passion? So, uh, teaching at West Point, a lot of opportunities for get cadet mentorship. Also, in uh, the military in general, leading soldiers, it, it's a great opportunity to help serve and, and teach them and, and, and uh, mold them. Technology, what the heck does technology have to do with service? Any ideas? Mike, you're an IT guy. <laughs> Would you consider IT a service field? Yes. Why is that? Uh, the way the world is today, it's basically the number one communication tool. Yeah, yeah. And, and we help people. We solve problems. We help people get through some tedious tasks uh, and frustration that they may have day in and day out. So that's my 30 years in the Army. Love the Army, but what I really want to talk about is what has led me to standing here today. I got out in 2012. When I got out in 2012, uh, went to Columbus, Ohio, found a good job, and I no longer had a real purpose. Uh, my military background is gone, and I needed to do something that had a purpose. So uh, soon after retiring, I found this organization called Team Red, White, Blue, also called Team RWB, and uh, they're all over the U.S., all over the world. We enrich veterans' lives. So Team Red, White, and Blue's mission is to enrich veterans' lives through physical and, and connect them to their community through physical and social activity. And I heard about this. I'm like, wow, what a mission. This is a purpose in life that I can get behind. This is something that I can continue to aspire towards. So I found that purpose once again in my life. And... So started working with them, loved what they did, loved the, the help that they provided to veterans. I saw the impact that we had on the veterans. And I was like, this is, this is good stuff. A few months later, they approached me and said, hey, how would you like to become a leader in, in our Columbus chapter? And I said, yes. Uh, it took me a little while. Uh, I thought about it a little while, and I finally said yes. And I said yes, not because out of some noble thing I wanted to help veterans. I enjoyed it. But it goes back to that Iraq and Afghanistan way. The guilt. I had a guilt inside of me. Um, it's that black hole. It was a stain inside of me. And I was like, you know, 
maybe I can give back to my fellow veterans because I never deploy. Where some of my friends deploy multiple times, some of them never return. So I wanted to give back to my community because I could not give enough when I was in the service. So that guilt drove me to say yes. Over the years, I continued to do other things with the chapter, continued to hold other leadership positions, got involved in Bunker Labs to help veterans grow in their own businesses, grow and own their own businesses. Uh, and the guilt gradually went down. And it was replaced by love. I found a love for what we were doing. I found a love for the veteran community, the community itself that we were in, the impact that we were having. So, my motivation was guilt originally. But in the end, we provided services. I continued to serve my veteran community because of the love that I have for them. So, in the end, motivation, it can lead you to do some good things, but then you have other motivations to continue to provide those, that service. So, a couple weeks back, um, I was down in Cincinnati with a fellow veteran, and this fellow veteran and I went down there to talk about Bunker Labs, and he said, uh, and on the way back, we spoke for two hours. Just ask my daughter, I don't think she's ever heard me speak for two hours. Uh, I'm not a big speaker, but he and I, we had this connection. This guy is a doctor, uh, doctor, Dr. Darren Summer. He was a battalion and brigade combat surgeon in 82nd Airborne, uh, a couple of different deployments, and saw some horrible things. And I talked about this guilt to him. And I talked about a philosophy that I had. He ended up sharing that same philosophy of anytime something bad happens, I truly believe that something good will come from it. Think positive, it will come. You have to be patient about it sometimes. So he and I were talking, and here I am, six years of having this guilt. And he said something that was so enlightening, so insightful that night. He said, Mike, think about, had you actually deployed, gone to Iraq, Afghanistan, and you, uh, one, could die, not come back, or two, then you went over there and did some great things and didn't have this guilt. And if you didn't have this guilt, maybe you would not be helping the veteran community the way you are today. And I'm like, wow, this was so insightful so meaningful, so impactful, that small little conversation that we had that night, I realized it doesn't matter why I do what I do today. It's that I'm helping others. So, in, in the end, I found passion by helping our, our veterans. I have purpose in life. And I do this through serving those veterans. So I encourage all of you to do that. Uh, so that guy, just an amazing impact on my life in just that one small conversation. What do we do actually in Team Red, White, and Blue? Team Red, White, and Blue, we try to get veterans active. We get them moving, we get them off the couch, so that way six years after retirement, they too can wear the uniform and, uh, and not get fat. So that was one of my original intents. But we go out there, get them active, have a lot of fun, and help our community. Uh, we do that through physical activity, social activity, in the end, also community service. This is a picture, a couple pictures of a guy, um, U.S. Marine Corps veteran from back in the 70s, and uh, he had some big physical ailments, couldn't go upstairs, uh, he had a stroke. And he ended up with a bathroom that was gutted, and for four years, he did not have a bathroom that he could use in that house. Yeah. So we came in and we changed that and we worked with them. Uh, so that's Sam Hart and his wife Tracy on the right hand side, revamped his bedroom and did so many other things within that house. They got a lot of benefit, but I will tell you, and I thank Sam and Tracy for inviting us into their room, into their house to do this because we, we, we received so much more than they did just by helping uh, those two and helping them improve their quality of life. Same thing, this is happening right now. Only in the last uh, year we've been helping this U.S. Marine Corps veteran, Phil Couch and his family. Another great family, and they had some horrible challenges when uh, they were moving into their house. So we essentially helped rebuild. In the end, for both these service projects, 
it's really, we wish we could do more. Um, and then Bunker Labs. Bunker Labs, we help those veterans transition from being in the military to owning their own business. Trying to help them figure out how to uh, uh, succeed. So this guy is Tom Burden, Air Force guy, and he won, one year ago, he won a deal on Shark Tank for $360,000. Uh, he teamed up with Lori, Mark, and Richard Branson on this deal, and he's like making uh, buku uh, changes to his industry that he's working in. He's helping them out, and big, big success. But in the end, uh, we want to get people active again. In the end, all of you find your purpose, find your passion. If you don't have it, go find it. It's not going to come and find you. You have to be active about it. Motivation. I joined the military because I needed money. I stayed with the military because I learned this is great. I love it. Same thing, helping these veterans. I joined it and I became a leader within the because of guilt. I gradually said, I love what I'm doing. So it doesn't matter what your motivation is. Any of you thinking about going to apply to any of the service academies? All right. Uh, are you doing community service right now? Yes? Cool? Good? All right. Any of you Eagle Scouts, maybe? Community service projects all over the place, right? So if you're applying or thinking about applying to one of the U.S. military academies, of course, it would be West Point. Anyway, uh, if you're applying one of those community services, one of those areas that they evaluate you on. So go out and seek that. In the end, it doesn't matter what your motivation is for doing your community service projects. Ultimately, you're helping others. So please continue to, to do that. Uh, focus on your future, not your past. When I'm standing in front of you today, it doesn't matter what I did in the past. You should say, what are you doing today, Colonel McNett, and what are you doing tomorrow? That's what matters most to me. Same with all of you, if you bring some baggage with you, doesn't matter what that baggage is in the past, this is your time to change. This is your time to say, I'm going to change, I'm going to find purpose, I'm going to find passion, and I'm going to make a change in my life. Uh, service, it can be frustrating. It, it can definitely be frustrating. Um, there are others every day, I wish I could get more people involved, and I ask myself, why can't I get more people involved? So it's definitely frustrating at times. Uh, thank a veteran. Don't just thank a veteran. Go the next step and start a conversation with that veteran. And ask them, you know, what's your story? Can you tell me a little bit about your background? Don't be afraid to ask those questions. If you just say thank you for your service, that's great. It's very much appreciated. But it's a conversation stop. Say, hey, let's have a conversation. I'd love to hear more about your background. And in the end, write your story. And I truly think if you find purpose and passion, you're going to be more happy. You get to write your own story. Don't let others write it for you. Don't be a character in somebody else's story. Figure out where you want to be 10 years from now and take action starting today. And so much of that can be done through service. So again, thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone, for inviting me. I love talking about this topic. I hope I was able to share something for you. And I, I appreciate your time. Hopefully I didn't bore you too much and uh, go out and find somebody to, to provide services to. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you again.